Let's look at some examples of computing indefinite integrals using this technique of u substitution, where u substitution is supposed to be the inverse operation for antiderivatives of the chain rule for differentiation. So when you the chain rule or this u substitution you often want to use when you see this factorization that shows up here. Like we notice there's this factor of 6x and this factor of 3x squared plus 4 to the seventh. So factorizations is a big part of recognizing u substitution. Because uh, after all, you have to identify a function g of u and then this differential d of u. Uh, but more importantly, we have to recognize composition of functions. We want to recognize a function inside of a function. So notice in this example, we have this 3x squared plus 4, uh, which in sits inside of the seventh power function. So when we see this function inside of a function, that's often the, the sort of the thing that triggers this whole U substitution process. It's the, this, it's the catalyst to it. Um, if you have some superpowers, maybe your spider sense starts tingling like, oh, U substitution's coming because you see this function inside of a function. And so I'm very inclined to suggest that U should equal 3X squared plus four uh, for this example right here, because we have this function inside of that one. Now, in order for U substitution to work, its derivative has to also be present. Because uh, I like to think of anti-differentiation as pl like plain detective. Like, uh, I I'm a detective and I come to the scene of the crime. It's like, ah, oh, I see what's happened. 6x times 3x squared plus 4 to the 7th. It's the derivative of but of. Who, right? Who who took the derivative? Who done it? And so it's, we round up the usual suspects, the power rule, the chain rule, the product rule from differentiation, right? Who who done it, right? And we're looking for the evidence here. And now these these master criminals, they, they like to mock the police officer, they like to mock the detective, so they leave their calling cards behind. And for you substitution, right, that is the chain rule, if it's the one who took the derivative, then it always leaves its calling card behind. And the calling card is that inner derivative. We have to see if the inner derivative is there. So if we think the original function was 3x squared plus 4, then taking the inner derivative, uh, we would end up with a 6x dx. And we can see that those pieces are exactly here in the integral. We always have the dx. The differential is always going to be there. It's the 6x part that we need. Putting these together, we form our du. And so therefore, we can calculate the antiderivative using this uh, u substitution. So plugging in the substitution here, the, we're going to take the integral of 3x squared plus 4 to the 7th. The 3x squared plus 4 becomes our u. So we get u to the 7th. And then the 6x times dx all comes together to give us a du. That all comes together. The 6 and the x aren't really disappearing. We're just substituting something equal for them instead. So the 6x dx becomes our du. By the anti-power rule, uh, we raise the power to the 8th. We divide by 8, add an arbitrary constant. And then substitute in the original value of u uh, in terms of x here. So we end up with 1 8th, 3x squared plus 4 raised to the 8th power plus a constant. And this gives us our antiderivative. If we want to check if we have the right, correct antiderivative, if we can take the derivative of this thing. I'm not going to do that right here, but I encourage you to pause this video to check it yourself just to verify your own derivative techniques here. But we were able to find this antiderivative here. Uh, using this u substitution. Um, let's look at our next crime scene detectives. We have we see in front of us the integral of x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 1. Well, the fact that we have a x cubed plus 1 inside of a square root makes me start to believe, well, maybe u substitution is at play right here, right? Because we have this x cubed plus 1, which sits inside of the square root function, right? Here we have this chain going on. And so I'm inclined to believe I could do a u substitution using that inner function x cubed plus one. But if I'm going to if I'm going to do this inner um, the, the, sorry if I if I'm going to do the u substitution we have to have the inner derivative which the inner derivative is going to be three x squared dx. Which well let, let's see what we have right here. We have a dx that's good. We have an x squared. But what about a 3? I don't have a 3 anywhere. What are we going to do without a 3? Uh, does that mean that's not the u substitution that we're going to use right here? What can we do? What can we do? Hmm. Well, as you sit there pondering for that for a moment, look out a window maybe. Oh, is that a cute little butterfly uh, flying through the window? You're not looking, right? You're not looking, right? You're not looking, right? Oh, oh, come back to the screen, everyone. 
Oh, look, we did have a 3 there the whole time, right? We have a 3x squared dx inside. And so you can see what's going on here is that if you're missing your constant multiple, like we were just missing the 3, if you're missing the constant multiple, that's easy to fix. We can actually put a 3 inside of the integral just by dividing by 3 as well. Um, 3 over 3 is equal to 1, and the strategic number 1 helps us out here. So that when we put these things together now, we get 3x squared dx. This comes together and makes Captain Planet No, uh, these powers combined form du instead. And so by this technique of u substitution, we get one third the integral of the square root of u du, or in terms of power functions, you might prefer uh, u to the one half du. So if you're only off by a scalar multiple, you can always correct that by timesing and dividing by the scalar multiple you want to make the uh, inner derivative correct here. And just make sure you keep track of this one third um, as the price you pay for not having the three in there in the first place. And then doing the power rule for antiderivatives. This can get confusing sometimes, especially with u substitution. Because with u substitution, you have to take the derivative to find the inner derivative. Then you want to anti-differentiate. Because you'll be taking derivatives and antiderivatives in the same problem, sometimes we get mixed up which way we're doing. So make sure that you use the antiderivative version of the power rule. And so you're going to get one third times raise the power of one half to be uh, three halves. So one half plus one is three halves. Then you divide by that new power, three halves, add your arbitrary constant. Now, of course, if you're dividing by three halves, that's the same thing as timesing by two thirds. So you're going to get a coefficient of two ninths in front. If we replace u with its original expression in terms of x, x cubed plus one, we then get two thirds x cubed plus one to the three halves power plus an arbitrary constant, which gives us our uh, antiderivative. This is the general antiderivative of this function right here. Now, in that last example, we saw that if we were missing the, the scalar multiple in front of the inner derivative, we are able to fix that by times in like in that case, three over three. So how much wiggle room do we have when it comes to, I don't have the right antiderivative? Honestly, not a lot. Basically that scalar multiple is the only flexibility we have uh, for this technique of u substitution. And I wanna show you an example of what can go wrong, right? Um, if you look at this function right here, you wanna find its antiderivative of x cubed times the square root of x cubed plus one dx here. It's very similar, except the outer uh, the function outside the square root is an x cubed instead of an x squared. So we might be tempted to try to make the same u substitution work, right? We have a u equals x cubed plus one. And so then du would still be three x squared dx like so. And that's not exactly what we have right here. What we have is we have an x times the square root of u. I'll just make that transition right now. Um, and then we have this x squared dx right here. And so we could stick a three in front of that by dividing by one third and one front. And so making that substitution, we end up with this one third, the integral of x u to the one half du. And so we've kind of partially substituted the new variable u instead of x. So how do we deal with the x right there? It's like, oh no, there's, there's, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. Um, later on in calculus two, we will kind of talk about some things one could do, but it turns out substitution doesn't work very well on this because you're going to get this extra bit, this X that we really can't do much about. If you're missing a multiple, that's fine. Um, but if there's more to it than just a scalar multiple, U substitution isn't going to be very effective here. Um, this one actually, you'd want to use integration by parts, which is a technique that uh, we can see later in calculus two.